very, very good advice. Probably too late to actually change what costume you have, right, as you're getting ready for this 5K, which starts at 11 o'clock this morning. The good news is the showers that are on the way will come later on during the day, a few around 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon when the 5K has been over for quite some time. So good news there. 53 in Smithfield right now, 55 Providence, 58 Newport, 58 in Westerly. So as we were mentioning, much milder than at this time yesterday morning. Live pinpoint Doppler 12 not showing any showers locally, but we are seeing some showers to our west. So we are tracking these showers to move through from the middle of the afternoon through the evening, although the uh, steadier showers hold off until after sunset. So that means it's a pretty good looking day. 63 at 1 p.m., 3 p.m. around 66 degrees with the chances of showers increasing the deeper we go into the day. We're going to talk a lot more about the future cast for today. Break down that trick or treat future cast coming up in just a few minutes. Brian. Pete, thank you. 731 checking the day's top stories for you. Providence fire crews busy on a scene overnight. Eyewitness News was there as well as a firefighter was taken from the scene on a stretcher. We have made calls to the fire department this morning for more information. You'll find the latest information right here and of course on our website as we learn more details. Please tell us the driver of a car on Route 6 in Somerset admitted to using drugs before crashing that vehicle with his child in the car. According to police now, 30 year old Matthew Leonardo took heroin and cocaine before blowing through a red light and slamming into a tractor trailer. At last check, Leonardo is still hospitalized. His six year old daughter is said to be OK. We continue learning more now about that crash we told you about right here yesterday morning. Five juveniles were hurt when the driver of that car reportedly drove into the woods Friday night. According to Barrington's police chief, the driver of the vehicle was charged with DUI. Two months ago, one person critically injured in a crash on that same curve in the road. More local coverage for you this morning. Thousands of you have already voted early in Massachusetts. This weekend, we're breaking down the numbers. Eyewitness News reporter Julianne Pixoto has more campaign 2016 coverage. This year, Massachusetts joins the more than 30 states that already offered early voting. As of Thursday night, state officials tell us nearly 290,000 Bay State residents had already cast their ballots. Hundreds of Seekonk residents are asking, why wait until November 8th? We've had over 700 people early vote so far. We have over 10,000 registered voters. So between the early voters and the absentee voters, we've had uh, over 10% of people vote already in Seekonk. Town Hall isn't normally this busy on a weekend, but dozens of people stopped by Saturday to take advantage of early voting. They gave a lot of opportunity, a lot of different dates, a lot of time. I didn't think they'd have Saturday voting, and here we are Saturday morning. It's perfect. The response we've had, our people love it. They're like, they, they're walking out of here, this is the best idea ever. Most Massachusetts town and city halls are early voting locations. Residents say it's a much different experience than voting on election day. I was in and out in literally 30 seconds, so um, this was definitely a quicker, uh, quicker process than normally. I'm actually going to be traveling um, on November 8th, so I wasn't going to be around, so this is a very convenient thing. Early voting started in the state on Monday and continues through November 4th. It's been successful so far. We'd like to see a few more people, and I hope next week, now that the word is out, that we'll get more people coming in to vote. To find out where and when you can cast your ballot, visit MassEarlyVoting.com. In the control room, I'm Julianne Pixoto, Eyewitness News. Dartmouth man lost control, thrown from his motorcycle. We've learned he's now died this weekend. Police in Westport say 57-year-old Daniel Levesque of Dartmouth died at Rhode Island Hospital. He collided with a Jeep that was backing out of a driveway over a week ago on Highland Avenue. Police say Levesque tried to stop but lost control and was thrown from the bike. Massachusetts State Police continue their investigation. Pinpoint News Tracker now taking you to Cove Road in Dartmouth. This is Miller's home port where authorities investigated reports of shots fired around 2 on Saturday. Then a few hours later, police in New Bedford responded to a disturbance at the 7-Eleven on West Rodney French Boulevard. Officials believe now 24-year-old Brendan Furtado of South Dartmouth is tied to both of those. Police say a gun found on him is from a 2009 home break-in. Furtado is charged with weapons offenses, disorderly conduct, and robbery. A reminder, as part of that ongoing Providence viaduct work, the traffic pattern has changed once again this weekend. Transportation officials urging you, stay in your lane. Here's how it looks. From left to right, there's one through lane going south, then a divider. Two more lanes going south, then an exit only lane to exit 21. That's at Wells Avenue. Then lastly, two exit 22 lanes to downtown. 
That shellfish ban, it's been lifted now after a harmful algae bloom has dwindled. Environmental officials in Rhode Island say all conditional harvesting areas will remain closed until next Friday, despite the recent rainfall. Those locations, they include Area A, Connecticut Triangle, Greenwich Bay, and Mount Hope Bay. Area B is open. Hundreds of you stopping by McCoy Stadium this weekend, Saturday's first ball yard sale and fall open house. Paw Sox fans given the chance to buy game used equipment as well as memorabilia, season ticket holders, some new faces as well, stopping by that event. Your diehards, your loyal season ticket holders and frequent visitors, and then maybe some people who haven't been here before who are coming here for a first time to get an autographed ball or a cool collectible item for a dorm room. By the way, there's also a trick or treating event right at McCoy tomorrow from 3.30 to 6.30. Time this morning for your Sunday local roundup on Election Day. If recreational pot is passed in Massachusetts, Rhode Island's Governor Gina Raimondo said in a recent interview that they'll have to take a closer look at the future of marijuana in Rhode Island. You can read more about that story and everything you need to know. It's online right now in the Sunday local roundup. Just head over to our homepage this morning, WPRI.com. 737 coming up on Eyewitness News this morning, a special story for a woman who was attacked back in May at a restaurant in Taunton. And a transgender student's case headed to the Supreme Court now. Those details coming up. It's still in the 50s. Live look outside. You can see some peaks of sunshine on the buildings downtown. Watching Eyewitness News this morning. It's coverage you can count on. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Pete Mangione. Just to give you a wider perspective of the system moving in this afternoon and this evening with the rain showers, most of it holds off until late in the day. This is around 4 p.m. with the bulk of the rain showers. Not quite here yet, but notice what happens. It's at the evening, 7 p.m. through midnight to scoot through, but also notice how quickly it moves away by Monday, by Halloween. This is Monday morning. Showers are long gone. That will set up a good Monday morning commute and a great trick-or-treat future cast. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes. Brian. Pete, we'll see you then. The waitress who was attacked by Arthur DeRosa at Bertucci's in Taunton back in May, now celebrating the birth of her baby. Sheena Chav Savoy excuse me, made that announcement just this week. In case you missed it, here's Eyewitness News reporter Madeline Wright with her story. 
Sheena Savoy announced the birth of her baby girl on Facebook. She didn't say the girl's name, but she did say she's thankful. It's it, fantastic news. I mean, I, I couldn't be happier for her. Rosemary Heath yeah. met Savoy on May 10th, the day Savoy was stabbed at Bertucci's restaurant inside the Silver City Galleria Mall in Taunton. Rosemary and her husband George were eating dinner. Savoy was waitressing. We heard um, Sheena scream. We didn't know if she was burned or, or what had happened. So when we looked left, um, we'd seen a man standing next to her. And then we saw him stab her. And I locked eyes with her, and she was just screaming, help me, help me. That's when George sprang into action, sacrificing himself to save others. And George had pushed Sheena to the ground, completely away from him, um, and then grabbed um, the assailant and turned him away from us, and then took a step back and went back in to lock him around the elbow so he couldn't lift the knife up again. And the... Um, assailant had gotten broken his arm free and stabbed George. The carnage ended when an off-duty police officer shot and killed the suspect, Arthur DeRosa. Rosemary is trying not to focus on her husband's death. Instead, she's thinking about the positives. George would, would not have hesitated in any other circumstances to help someone. And um, it's unfortunate that we lost him. Um, but it's, just, it's fantastic that this baby's healthy. And that was Madeline Wright reporting. Rosemary says she does hope to see the baby soon. Your time now is 742. Still to come on Eyewitness News. He certainly made his mark in the music world, but now he's headed to Broadway. Coming up next, CBS Sunday Morning sits down with Josh Groban. Plus, a student in Virginia headed to the Supreme Court. Those details next. Much milder this time in the morning compared to yesterday, and even milder this week. I actually have one day in the 70s showing up in the seven day. We'll break it down coming up in just a few minutes. You are watching Eyewitness News on WPRI 12. It's coverage you can count on. Coverage you can count on. This is Eyewitness News on WPRI 12. Welcome back. A Virginia high school student's case to use the boys' restroom headed to the Supreme Court now. Born as a female, he identifies as a male. 
Gavin Grimm is a transgender student in the Gloucester Public School District. This is in Virginia. The Obama administration says students who are transgender should be allowed to use restrooms and locker rooms with their gender identities, though more than a dozen states are putting a hold on that issue. To me, this is, this is one way that, that the school is saying we don't believe that who you are is legitimate. Supreme Court plans to hear that case this winter with a ruling expected in June. Until then, Gavin Grimm will not be able to use the boys' bathroom. Singer-songwriter Josh Groban, not only making his mark in the music world, headed to Broadway now. CBS Sunday Morning correspondent Anthony Mason has his story. Here's to happiness, freedom, and life. May your travel be swift as a sight cut through the grass. In a studio on New York's 42nd Street, the cast of the new musical, The Great Comet of 1812, rehearses for opening night. 24 members of this production will soon be making their Broadway debuts. All the things I could have been, but I never had the nerve. Life. Including the leading man, Josh Groban. So, all right, all right. I've had my time. Close my eyes. Let the death bells chime. This is something you've wanted for a long time. Yeah, it was my childhood dream. Is this how I died? Was there ever any other way my life could be? For weeks now, the 35 year old singer has been putting in grueling 12 hour days to get ready. Is it harder work than you thought it would be? I'm a professional worrier, so it is as hard as I thought it would be. <laughs> but I know you're not afraid to work hard. No, but I'm also, I have, I have an excellent work ethic and also I worry. So I think maybe the two are, are related. I'm ready. On the first night of previews this month, after a lifetime of dreaming, Josh Groban finally was ready for his Broadway entrance. What do you remember about that moment? It was more emotional for me than I thought it would be. I was trying to be really calm and collected and professional and thinking, I got, you know, this is our first preview. I got a job to do. Let's go do this. You think about the moments, you know, you didn't know if you could do it. You think about all the people that discouraged you, you know, all the people that encouraged you, the teachers. And then you just have to perform. And then you have to just do it. Yeah. That was Anthony Mason for Sunday Morning. You can see more about Josh Groban's Broadway debut today at 9, right here on WPRI 12. Now, here's meteorologist Pete Mangione with your live Pinpoint Doppler 12 futurecast. Main weather headlines for today will be the milder temperatures, the late arriving rain, and then a pretty good looking Halloween futurecast. In fact, our weather intern Dustin Whiteside helping to prepare these weather headlines. He has a copyright on this, so uh, I don't want to steal his credit. Tracking some rain the late afternoon through the evening. A spooktacular Halloween, that's for sure. And then a 70 in the seven day. I will let you know which day coming up in just a few minutes. Future cash shows 1 p.m. We will see increasing clouds and then a few showers possible. Maybe you're driving home from the Pats game around uh, 4 p.m. Not the Pats game itself because, of course, they're in Buffalo, but you're driving home from maybe a friend's house watching the game. These are scattered showers. They really start to fill in after 5 or 6 p.m. And by 8 p.m., some of these will be heavy at times, continuing off and on through about midnight. And then for Monday morning, we clear out the clouds, bring on the sunshine. So likely some shades will be needed on the Monday morning drive to work. And speaking of shades, you might need a few of those as we are looking at Newport. A little sun in the background. So yeah, the sunglass is appropriate. We're not going to see all day sunshine, certainly plenty of clouds around, but the sun will be in and out today with the milder temperatures and no showers around locally. In fact, we zoom you into the capital city where the monster uh, 5K is going on. 11 a.m. will be in the 60s. Rain holds off until at least the middle of the afternoon, so things should be fine for that 5K and all the fun costumes out there for the kids. 53 right now in Smithfield, 58 Newport, 58 Westerly. We still have some 40s out in Connecticut. Likely the winds went calm. The sky is a little bit clearer, at least for a time this morning, allowing those temperatures to drop. But everybody should be into the 60s today, and that's because before these showers arrive, some milder air drains into southern New England, and that will set up a future cast, which does allow temperatures into the low 60s by lunchtime. Now, a 20% chance of showers around 3, 4 p.m. By 5 or 6 p.m., we increase that chance to around 50 or 60. 
and at the south coast, similar to inland spots, we should also be able to make the mid-60s today. 66 in Charlestown, westerly at 66, and Narragansett around 66 degrees. So a pretty good outdoor day before these showers arrive late. Same thing here in northern Rhode Island, 63 in Burville, 63 in Situate, 63 in Woonsocket, low 60s in West Greenwich. Not a bad afternoon to sneak in some late season golf. 64 in Attleboro, Seekonk at 64 degrees and mid-60s from Westport into Dartmouth. Wind should not be that big of a deal today, around 5 to 10 miles an hour from the northwest. A few things to go over here in the seven day future cast. The first thing would be Halloween day, looking good at 51 degrees, certainly cooler, a little breezier than today. And then by the evening, hopefully you're not too scared by this graphic. Not a scary forecast, that's for sure. 5 p.m., 48 degrees, down to 44 after sunset and 41 by 9 p.m. So, a bit chilly out there, but nothing too out of the ordinary for Halloween, but at least we keep away the rain. On Tuesday, getting into the mid-50s. Wednesday, upper 60s with a mix of clouds and sun. And then especially mild towards the end of the week. On Thursday, I have a high temperature of 70. Now, we'll have to wait and see to know what temperature actually gets realized. It'll be a little bit cooler at the coast, but in terms of how this compares to what temperatures would normally be at, 58 is your normal for Thursday. The record is 78, so not all that close to a record, but certainly well above normal for this time of year. And then we break up that streak of mild weather likely Thursday night into Friday as the front approaches with some showers. So down to 56 for a high on Friday. But again, we'll uh, keep you updated on this future cast for the end of the week. Obviously, when we have precipitation in the forecast, we're many days out, the timing can change. By Saturday, we're looking at mid 50s with a mix of clouds and sun. You can always get an updated future cast over on our website at WPRI.com.